Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, everybody. Morning, Jamie. Let me just center that. How are we doing? Right. I think that's about right. It's a little bit blurry, though. It'll have to settle. How are we this fine um, grey overcast morning? Sorry, I just had to look out my window then to see what sort of weather it was. You're good. You're good. Excellent. Excellent. Unblur. Why are you blurry? Right. Um. Morning, Faisal. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, thanks, Jamie. I had my um, revisions for my last story came in last night, so I'm actually kind of pleased because I'd been I'd been quite worried about them coming back because that is the story that I wrote when um, we had that trip to London halfway through for um, the Mandem meetup. And, uh, oh, hang on, let me just, just look to see where that goes. That goes there, so that's that bit there, right, okay. And um, so I'd written, is that proper English? I had written, I had wrote, I wrote, I've written about 20,000 of the words here at home. And then obviously we went to London uh, for, for two weeks and I wrote another 14,000 words there and made myself get up early every single morning to write before anyone else was out of bed to get that thousand words done each day. And managed 14,000 words there and then sort of came home and finished the rest of the word count which was like 10 or 14,000 words once we got back home and I was worried that the continuity of the story would just be all over the place because my mind wasn't in the story if that makes sense because there was just so much stuff going on at the time that trying to concentrate on uh, a romantic story was not, I don't know, how can I say this, was not, it didn't have my full attention, shall we say. It doesn't have the amount of attention I normally give a story when I'm writing it. And so I thought that when these, um, when these revisions came back, that it would be a, a huge amount of revisions and there would just be so much work needed to be done on it because I thought I've not concentrated very well for this story and it's going to be crap but having said all of that she loved it she loved it and there are a few things that I need to work on, but they're not huge things. They're not huge structural changes that need to be worked on. So I don't have to sort of um, take the story apart 
insert new things, take things out and then put it all back together again and try and make it look seamless the way you normally do when you do revisions. So I'm, I'm kind of really happy that somehow <laughs> I managed to write a decent story. So. You're still too distracted by the sights of Soho. Yes, I mean, yes. <laughs> it's hard to think of romance when you're in Soho. I mean, I suppose you could think of some type of romance when you're in Soho, but... There's no reason why Soho can't have romance. So yeah, so very happy that, where's that dark brown? Very happy that the, uh, the story seems to have worked out. scene for the new book. What? Oh, a scene from the new book. Oh my god. Um, 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 let me just grab my, um, my scrappy pad. Let me just think. Uh, pencil, pencil, pencil. There's me scrappy pencil. Um, a scene from the new book. Gosh. So many, so many, so many. <coughs> let me think, let me think. How about... Um, uh, what about... The... When I had the... The child fall in the... Um, in the gorilla enclosure. How about that? I, c I could do that, couldn't I? So let's have. Um, let's just think. Uh, what, do we, what does a gorilla look like? Uh, um, right, stern. sort of eyes I have no idea what a gorilla's face looks like um, and they have, they have like little, ear, little ears don't they? they have little ears here but they have that big head um and we want some big, powerful um, arms, and they're kind of they're kind of fluffy, aren't they? So fluffy arms, and his other big arm. <laughs> oh my gosh! Gorillas around the world can be. Cross with me. Got a big chest. Uh, got a big belly. And then he has sort of like this other foot here. And he's. They have a big chunky bum. so bad this is so bad I don't know how the back feet go let's have the back foot going like that oh my god this is so bad and we'll have um, 
there's some bits of grass bits of grass and um, So we want a little boy. Let's give him some curly hair. I've not given a character curly hair yet. There we go. Little boy. <laughs> uh. second leg go. There we go. Little boy. Give him an eye. There we go. Little boy in the <laughs> in the gorilla enclosure. It does look a little there we go. If we make it a bit more like a mullet, there you go. Mullet. That's not a bad gorilla. That's not that's not too bad. That's not too bad. There you go. You think the music is a tad loud? Okay, and this was um, Jamie requested that. Hang on, I shall turn the music down a little bit. There we go, I've turned it down a little bit. I should do all the illustrations from now on. My books don't get illustrations. I am waiting that some of the Mills and Boone books get made into manga in Japan. And I'm waiting for the day that one of mine gets made into manga. I will be so thrilled to see one of mine get made into a manga book. Because the illustrations in those are amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm very thrilled that my other books are published around the world. Um, oh, I can't even think of how many countries they're published in. They're published in quite a lot. And so I'm thrilled about that. But it would be uh, a real thrill to see them in uh, made into a manga book. <laughs> Nicola anime. <laughs> God, could you imagine?
do, 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 do. Right, okay. I'm reading a really good book at the moment. It's um, fiction, and I've forgotten the name of the author, but it's called Notes on an Execution, and it's so good. I'd heard about it a while back, and uh, kept meaning to pick it up, and never did, and then I happened to be in my uh, local library uh, last week and no on Saturday I think it was and they had it it was on one of their displays as a, a book to read and I remembered I'd wanted to see it so I picked it up and uh, I've been reading it the last few days and it's really, really good. Really good. Um, it's the burb tomorrow. Yes, yes, it is. There's actually, I meant to say to you, Jamie, there's um, a lady um, on Twitch. I've forgotten her name. But her channel is I Paint Burbs. B I R B S. I paint burbs, and that is literally all she does. She only, obviously, does birds, and um, she has like one camera on her, one camera on her art, and another camera on her bird feeder outside. And she gets, I think she's in America, so she gets, you know, like the cardinals and all those sort of birds that we don't get in the UK and everything and she has quite a thriving art channel so I thought that might be right up your alley right up your strata as they say as the sort of thing you'd be interested in if you wanted to see like a bird only thing Um, right now, let me think. This comes down here. I'm just trying to stay on track with all these different fur directions that goes all over the place around the nose, the center of the forehead. Oh, that's sweet, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's not an ugly cat. She's a cutie patootie. There's a slight sort of grey edge to this. But 
Kate, I thank you for your loyalty. Has James put that video, uh, uh, video out yet? The football video. Keep waiting for him to do it. I don't think he's done it yet. Has Becca named it yet? No, no, I don't think she has. I'll have to remind her. If she didn't, I'm calling it Buck because of the Buck Tooth. He hasn't got a Buck Tooth! <laughs> it is literally the shine. No, hang on. Look, shine on the lip. This is the lower lip here, and that is just the shine, the catch light, like you have in the eyes. It is not a bug tooth. <laughs> I mean, I like that you're determined. That you're determined, and you you're, you're you're sticking to your sticking to your guns, so to speak. Oh, what was that? Oh. Oh my gosh. I literally just turned around to grab my eraser that sits on top of my pencil sharpener and I saw something black on the carpet past it and it looked to me like it was moving and I thought it was a <sighs> thought it was a spider. <laughs> oh my god. I'm a bit spooked at the moment because Hi Natalie. Um, I'm a bit spooked at the moment because Nick told me that he woke up last night in the middle of the night with the feeling that something something dropped onto the back of his ne neck and he felt it scurry away and so now he's utterly convinced there's a spider somewhere in our room and so because I stream from our room I'm like I'm on the alert. I've already checked all the walls and I've checked the ceilings and all around my desk and under my desk and I can't see anything. But I'm a little bit spooked and so now I'm just kind of oh. It's like that thing, you know when people start talking about fleas and you suddenly start to itch. It's like he's mentioned the possibility of a spider and now I'm like Mm. There's a spider somewhere. Save me. Time to move is the spider's house now. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna have to uh, nuke it from orbit. Probably under the bed. Or oh, don't say that now. Ah. Uh... You don't want it to be under the bed.
<laughs> yes, Natalie, that was a very comforting thought. Thank you. There's a scene in um, TV Shut Up. <laughs> There's a scene in Friends where um, I think, is it Rachel is trying to make out she's a bad house guest or something? And so she does all these things trying to make Joey move out or something. I can't remember what it is, but she gets. Uh, no, someone else does it to sort of try and get Rachel to move out and they bring in like a tarantula and she picks it up or something and Joey sort of says I feel that it's on me I feel that it's on me and that's exactly what I get I just have to, the idea of a spider or seeing a spider and I can literally feel it on me even though it's nowhere near me it's just, oh no, 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 no I've definitely got the heebie-jeebies this morning. Oh, Phoebe does it, right, to get Rachel to move. Yeah, I knew it was someone. I knew Rachel was involved. I couldn't remember which way it was. Thank you for that, Jamie. But yeah, that's, that's what I feel like right now. There's a spider in here. I hope you all realise how brave I'm being by continuing on with the stream. <laughs> right, this fur comes down this way. But if it suddenly goes silent or you suddenly hear screaming and the pencils go flying, then you will know, <laughs> you will know what's happened. I keep stopping and looking around me. I'm sort of so unnerved by it. I feel like the damn things are going to creep up on me like some sort of stealth spider. Bear in mind when Nick was telling this story and he said he woke up and felt something scurry across his neck. He got up and got out of bed. Did he wake me? No. Did he worry for his wife's safety? <laughs> no. He left me there. <laughs> do this section first because this is quite a dark bit of brown so um, it's the spider stream now do you want to name the spider Jamie <laughs> Right, okay, so slightly dark a bit now. Um, you don't have any poisonous spiders here, so I'm not sure you're in danger. I know, but it's not the point though, Natalie. <laughs> I know we don't have, well, we do have false widows because I know we've got a load of false widows in our shed in the back garden because Nick was bitten 
uh, once. Um, but I don't know, just the idea, I mean, I'm looking around now and I, I don't know, I'm looking at all the dark places. Uh, he's a chess player, was simply waiting for the spider to move next out of good sportsmanship. Oh. Actually, 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 this has got a hint of red to it here, so let me just do, put in this, um, is this the burnt sienna? Yes, it is. There. A little bit here. I think I'll just put a little soft underglaze of this burnt sienna under all of this brown. Because I think it's that thing when animals get. Um, sunlight on their fur if they have quite dark fur like dark brown or black fur you can almost see in the light there's like a red tinge to their fur so i think it's a good idea to have this sort of burnt sienna under the chocolate brown because then it will help show up when i use the slice tool to slice into it for fur marks What is everybody's favourite animal, actually? I'm expecting Natalie to say a duck or a chicken. Um, when I was five, elephants. When I was like 12, horses and now foxes and deer. And ducks. Yay, I was a little bit right. I mean, I know you're going to say a bird, Jamie, but what type of bird? You must have a favourite bird. I remember my favourite bird used to be a peregrine falcon because it was the fastest bird. I used to think that that was kind of cool. And it looked cool too. Ducks. Quack, quack. Impeccable impression, wasn't it? Any particular duck? Mandarin ducks? Mandarin ducks look kind of cool. Ducks and owls. But then again, which owl? I like snowy owls and barn owls. Um, the long eared owl, I think, looks quite nice as well. And those little burrowing owls. Have you seen those? Those are really cute. Uh, the Pekin or the Indian Runner. Oh, I'll have to look up an Indian Runner. 
Ow, like scare me. <laughs> Barn Owl and Orpington Ducks. Let me have a look at an Indian runner. Let me see what they look like. Indian runner ducks. Oh, very slim line. Oh, I like those. Yeah, they're cute. I like those. Uh, you collect feathers and you have a barn owl feather. Oh, awesome. How's the crochet coming on? Oh yeah, I forgot about you were doing the crochet. I haven't touched mine in ages. I think because it's been put away somewhere and I don't know where it is. But I was working on a blanket. just completed the first leg of Faisal's camel. You risked her. Yeah, that's the thing with uh, with crochet. You can't do too much. It's all those uh, twisting and looping motions that you have to do. It's very um, repetitive and you can get RSI so so quickly. Which hooks do you use, Natalie? Because um, I used to get the RSI so badly if I just used the standard metal hooks. And I think I bought a set of, oh, what were they called? Um, tulip hooks, I think, if I'm guessing correctly. And they've got quite a fat handle on them and it just allows me to um, sort of do that with the hook a lot easier instead of constantly going in and out and looping and doing twisting with my wrist so I could just sort of I don't know with the tulip hooks I find it easy just to sort of twist with the fingers so that it doesn't hurt as much and you could do more oh it's your yarn hand that's weird just trying to think yarn hand probably because you hold it in a very particular uh, position to get the yarn tension I thread the yarn through my left hand and sort of uh, weave it in between all of my fingers and that finger sort of holds out like that to hold my yarn so I'm wondering if you've got the same sort of thing you hold it quite stiffly maybe uh, using the Rikurumi the plastic handle right okay Are they quite small, the Rikurumi um, hooks? Same yarn position, yeah.
The handle's not much bigger than the hook. Yeah, that can uh, that can cause an issue. Yeah, I think I I found using the the bigger ones with the thicker handle really sort of helped with the RSI. It's worth giving it a go, that's for sure. How's everybody getting on at their um, Valorant? I've been uh, doing a few uh, custom games with Nick so he can sort of spend some time remembering to use his utility <laughs> and to start looking at the minimap because he doesn't look at the minimap when he plays and it's like you really need to use that Nick and uh, I got to play a little bit of KJ yesterday which was 
which was nice, but a killjoy. And that was good fun. He plays really, really well when, because it's just a 1v1 game, that he has time to sort of think and not worry about what other people might say to him and plan and to try and be a little bit sneaky. And then he forgets it all when he plays in a main game, so. You still never played it. Oh. I need the black here. Right, let's try and did I hear the good news in James's stream? No. What good news was that?
You've been remodded. Really? Oh, fabulous. I'm really pleased. You're outnumbered by the girlies three to one. <laughs> uh, right, I need a bit of a bit of black in here. Just darken it up just a little bit more. Four actually, but I guess you don't care about Becca. <laughs> uh, she only comes around as much as Envy does. Envy doesn't count, he got the job on a technicality. It's also Robert. <laughs> All that matters is that Jamie's got his job back. Uh, da, 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 da. Was there a big welcome back ceremony for you, Jamie? No, they didn't put out balloons and like a welcome banner or anything like that. I should have a word with my son for being neglectful in the celebration duties. Alright, so these come across straight-ish. Sure, it was very underwhelming.
You did it during stream. I have to dip now, though. I've got a meeting in five. Oh, okay, Natalie. No worries. Have a good meeting. Whether meetings can ever be considered good, but... I once worked for this energy company. I used to work on like the switchboard, not the switchboard, but um, I worked in the department known as priority services. So if people were considered, um, you know, on benefits or if they had any health issues, they were listed as priority services people. And so I used to deal with all of them. I used to deal with the warm home discount all that sort of thing, but the company I worked for, and I'm not going to name it, was ran almost like it was an American company. It was very much about, let's have these weekly meetings where everybody gets together and you have to say one thing you're grateful for, and one thing you would have liked help with, and they were so hot on health and safety that you had to report everything and I mean everything so if you were like walking to your desk and you happened to see say an elastic band on the floor you had to make an incident report a freaking incident report for an elastic band because it was a trip hazard and you had to fill out this three page form and if they found out that you'd noticed something and you had not filled in the incident form they were not happy about that at all and it really used to grind my gears I had to fill out these forms all the time it was annoying It was almost like a system where you you built up like like merit badges for the amount of reports that you sent in. Well, exactly. You would pick it up. You would you would just pick it up, yeah, and think, oh, that's a good elastic band. I'm keeping that. I might need that for something, and stick it in your desk, or you just chuck it in the bin, or whatever. It's like, no, you had to make an incident report first. You had to risk assess if you could sort it out yourself. It's like... I think I lost count how many incident reports I sent in with elastic bands or... A loose staple on the floor because all oh, that could stick into somebody's foot if they had open-toed shoes on and oh this cable attaching a monitor to a computer is somehow hanging out of the side of someone's desk and it could wrap around their legs and they could trip on it oh it just used to drive me bonkers and you would have these staff appraisals like every three months where they would go through um, how many reports you'd submitted, then they would do that whole, uh, let's listen to one or two of your calls, Nicolette. Let's see how you dealt with this particular customer because it was all, you know, calls are recorded for handling and training purposes. And they did do that. My God. I remember I got into trouble once because <laughs> um, I was in my assessment one of these three month assessment things and they listened to two of my calls so that they could sort of talk about them and um, 
you know, to see if there was anything I could have done better and things like that. And I got into trouble because at the end of the call, I forgot to say to the people, is there anything else I can do for you? People would ring up with one issue they wanted, you'd deal with that issue. And sometimes, especially if they'd been ratty or horrible or anything, I'd be like, I want to get you off the phone as quickly as possible. And so I'd just go, okay, thanks very much. Bye, bye. Put the phone down. And these were the calls that would get picked up for training purposes. And it'd be like, you really need to ask the customer, no matter how rude they've been, if there's anything else that you can do for them uh, in your lovely customer service voice. Um, and um, it, I just ugh, never work with the public. <laughs> right, let me just use some of this. Okay, right, I think that is where I'm going to leave it for today on my very, very pretty, pretty, pretty tat. And uh, I seem to have survived spider attack, so that's good. So yeah, so thank you for joining me. Um, it's Thursday today, right? So yes, yeah, so tomorrow, we get to start on the lovebird, so that should be fun. So I hope you'll join me for that. I will keep you updated on the spider and uh, have a good day and I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for joining with me guys. Bye.